Good afternoon. And welcome to the training on writing bid specifications. Let's face it, most SFA directors do not like writing bid specifications because it's a very tedious task and it's very time consuming. But writing quality specifications for your bids is important because they serve both as quality and cost control standards for your SFA. They also help avoid misunderstanding between suppliers, buyers, and users by detailing exactly what is being requested. They are essential when a district is seeking price quotes for both formal and informal procurements. The SFA needs to communicate all characteristics of the item it wants to purchase to prospective vendors. They help vendors understand exactly what you want to purchase so a competitive price can be quoted and helps ensure that you receive the price quotes you so you're comparing apples to apples. <coughs> the SFA doesn't want one vendor quoting broccoli florets and another quoting broccoli cuts. Remember that providing vendors with detailed specifications is also a requirement in the child nutrition program. Step number one is always the cycle menu. The menu is your driving force for writing bid specifications. The menus must of course meet all federal guidelines and be appealing to your customers. It's a good practice for districts to use a cycle menu for a designated period of time. Menus created by seasons allow for the opportunity to incorporate in-season options. Planning menus in advance saves time, helps avoid repetitive tasks, reduces labor, and implements cost-effective inventory management. The process that you would use for developing specifications are, first again, you develop the cycle menus. And from those cycle menus, you need to make sure you have standardized recipes, either by making them yourself or finding recipes that have already been standardizing standardized using the child nutrition program standards. Then you evaluate the quality and customer acceptance of the current items that you're using. Research the market for any new items you may wanna have and use. Make sure you request a description of the product from the manufacturer. I think an important step is making sure that you taste test with your consumers, and then you use all of that information to write your bid specifications. Like I said, it's a good idea to conduct a screening of products that you might want to include on your menus. Screening products allows you to provide a list of pre-approved equal product brands to use when writing your specifications. Some schools might find that their customers prefer certain brands, which in turn increases the number of meals served. The SFA needs to limit the use of brand spec specifications to items where the brand really does matter in acceptability and participation. One food that always comes to mind to me is pizza. SFA directors report that students prefer this brand of pizza over the other brand of pizza. And so they want to specify uh, which brand of pizza they want to use. So if the decision is made to use a brand name specification, the SFA should have written justification that supports the brand. 
And you always have to remember to include the or pre-approved equal to give prospective vendors the opportunity to present their product to the SFA for consideration. The menu and standardized recipes will help to determine the type of product to purchase. There are three product categories, distributor's choice, private label, and manufacturer's brand. Review all of the categories to determine which label fits your needs. For example, the SFA would not need to purchase the top quality labeled green beans to prepare a green bean casserole. The distributor's choice category of products has only one or a few ingredients and represents a lower dollar volume. The supplier may quote a price on any brand and the school district places no restriction on the brands to be purchased. The supplier is not asked to identify the brand being quoted and the site receiver does not check the brand delivered. Therefore, the distributor may change the brand without notifying the school district. The only requirement is the product in the pack and the case size identified on the solicitation document must be the same. For example, a, a case of pinto beans containing 12 303 cans couldn't be substituted if the specification calls for six number 10 cans and a 50 pound bag of sugar can't be substituted, substituted with two 25 pound bags of sugar. You may want to consider moving as many products as possible to distributor's choice because it reduces the time needed to develop detailed bid specifications. Private label products are packed under industry acceptable standards. The private label represents the supplier's brand. Many distributors have their own private label brand and prefer to sell it instead of brand name items. Again, although the supplier will choose the brand, it still must conform to the specifications. And it's a good idea to make sure you taste those private label brands to ensure that it meets your specifications. Then we have manufacturer's brand and they're recognized by name and generally attract customers who are loyal to their name. Manufacturer's brand products are usually main entrees, contain multiple ingredients and are processed. Your objective is to have the product available each time it's on the menu. This is what increases particip participation and keeps your customers returning. These products are subject to tremendous variation in quality among brands. As food becomes more complex and processed, more effort has to be devoted to quality control. Some examples of items where a manufacturer's brand would be used are pizza, chicken nuggets, whole grain burritos, whole grain French toast. So what is a product spe specification? It's a concise statement that includes the requirements to be satisfied, satisfied by a product, material, and or process. It is important to develop specifications that do not restrict competition. Specifying a brand name only product instead of allowing a pre-approved equal to be offered restricts free and open competition. Writing bid specifications can be difficult and time consuming because the descriptions are often long and very detailed. But in some cases, the specifications can be limited 
to only those characteristics that are essential for con communicating with the supplier, such, such as standard of identity, <clears throat> which you'll often see as SOI, quality, grade, and size. Most single ingredient foods, such as fresh produce or grated meats, often only need a very brief description. Remember to use common language of the industry when developing your product specifications, because it's important to provide a clear product description. The clearer the specification, the more likely you are to receive the product that you are requesting. So let's look at what should be included in a bid specification. There are multiple things that need to be included. Of course, um, you should include the name of the product, a description of the product, the case pack and weight, the minimum and maximum size of the product, and the pieces if applicable, and the main ingredient. There are other items that need to be included in the bid specifications, such as prohibited ingredients, nutritional standards, the unit on which the award is made, and other quality indicators. You would think your product name would, would be self-explanatory, but it isn't always. Take, for example, chicken nuggets. There are hundreds of different chicken nuggets that are in the marketplace, but there are also chicken fritters and chicken tenders. Make sure you know what you're asking for. The same goes for apples. What kind of apple do you want? There's red delicious, there's golden delicious, Granny Smith, Jonathan, Macintosh, Fuji, and more. <coughs> I don't know if you can name as many apples as I did in the previous slide. And since not, I'm not an authority on apples, I went to the Choice Plus Reference Guide to review the popular varieties. Well, this manual is very old. This version was published in 1996. I still find it extremely helpful when trying to write product specifications. You certainly want to make sure that you have an accurate description of the product that you're wanting to purchase. The description should include your type, cut, shape, portion size, pre-cooked weight, whether it's frozen, fresh, or dry. In the case of chicken nuggets, what type of chicken nuggets are they? Are they spicy, southern, breaded, battered? Do you want a particular shape, such as dinosaur-shaped nuggets? Are they pre-cooked and just need to be reheated, or are they raw? Do they come to you frozen? If a brand name is specified, then you must allow an equal product to be substituted to ensure maximum free and open competition. So if you are specifying a brand, you should also include the manufacturer's name, the manufacturer's name for the product, the manufacturer's code number, and the manufacturer's pack size. This will allow all vendors to bid apples to apples with the product they sell. Remember that you can state in the bid specifications that only pre-approved equals are allowed. Never let a vendor determine what is considered an equal because their determination of equal may not be the same as yours. You may even wanna have the prospective vendors submit a large enough sample that you can do a taste test with some of your students.
Case pack and weight are important. How should the item be packaged and how big are the cases? This can be as simple as a six number 10 cans or five, four or five pound loaves or not to exceed 25 pounds. Um, some other example descriptions might include individually wrapped, 48 to the case, 72 to the case, 96 to the case. Cases cannot exceed 30 pounds. Describe the minimum and maximum size of the product you would be willing to accept. Some examples on our chicken nuggets may be minimum weight is 3.9 ounces and cannot exceed 4.1 ounces, or there must be five nuggets per three ounce portion. What are the main ingredients for the product you're looking to purchase? Products may have a lot of ingredients, but everything always has a primary ingredient. And oftentimes that in ingredient has a quality indicator. Some possible examples would include beef, pinto beans, whole muscle white chicken meat. A quality indicator example could be whole muscle white chicken meat versus natural proportion chicken meat, which would include both white and dark meat. What are the other ingredients to be included? Describe what other ingredients are included in the product, such as whole grain pasta, whole wheat flour, spices, emulsifiers, vegetable purees, and thickening agents. If you don't specifically list an ingredients, ingredient, you should not expect it to be in the product ingredients. Be careful though of being too specific because you may not find a product that meets your specifications. An important one is prohibited ingredients. Are there any ingredients that are prohibited? When you're creating your specification, indicate what ingredients are prohibited in the product, such as food additives, artificial coloring, of course, trans fat, MSG, any specific allergens, such as soy, eggs, and peanuts. The nutrition standards are the minimum or maximum nutrient or ingredient requirements or limitations. For example, your product specification might state that there must be two chicken, chicken drumsticks must equal at least two ounce meat, meat alternate. If you're purchasing a, barine, a bean burrito, your product specifications might state that the bean in the burrito must provide a 1.5 ounce equivalent for the meat, meat alternate group. Or the whole grain rich tortilla must provide a 1.5 ounce equivalent for the grains component for the child nutrition program. Regardless of what you specify, products must meet CN meal requirements to be claimed for meal reimbursement. Make sure that you specify when you need documentation that pr proves the product meets CN meal pattern requirements, <coughs> including a CN label and product formulation statement. Specifying the unit on which the award will be made um, saves a lot of time, even though you have to double check them. Um, it's always good to let them know, prospective vendors know, the unit on which you're going to award. Um, so how will the SFA determine which company is offering the best price? How will the unit price be determined for an acceptable product? Should the prospective vendor provide their price based on case price, serving size, or by the pound? 
be careful when you're allowing weight ranges as this could lead you to awarding an item to a vendor that does not have the lowest price. For example, if I use in my description a weight range of 3.9 <coughs> to 4.1 ounces portion <coughs> of chicken nuggets, such as in this example, it looks like vendor B has a lower case price. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but their portion price is higher. If the SFA states they will be awarding by the 30 pound case and choose vendor B because the case price is cheaper, they would not be awarding to the lowest vendor. So if you see, <coughs> vendor B has a case price of $37. That's based on a 4.1 ounce portion. So their portion price is 0.474. Vendor A is quoting a 3.9 ounce portion. The case price is $38. So the portion price is actually lower at 0.463. So be careful, you don't want bid protests. <clears throat> and you also want to make sure you get the most bang for your buck. Include any applicable quality indicators in your specifications. Some food items are very basic and are either defined by their single ingredient or, again, by their standard of identity. Things such as yogurt. Standards of identity are a mandatory set of requirements related to the nature, composition, and essential characteristics a food must have and to be order, in order to be marketed under a specific name. Yogurt is an example of a food with a standard identity. The, the FDA describes standard of identity as being used to promote honesty and fair dealing in the interest of consumers. As I was writing this presentation, <coughs> I started looking at some of the quality indicators and realize that the code of federal regulations is very specific in what each product must meet in order to be listed um, under that name. So I looked up cheddar cheese, because I know cheese is a product that, uh, that, you know, there's cheese product, cheese spread. So this was just a very small part of, the product des description and the quality indicators or standard of identity that cheese food products have to have in order to be called cheddar cheese. Part of the description is listed on this slide, but there is a number of other criteria. So the bottom line is if you're purchasing cheddar cheese, you know that it must meet specific quality st standards to bear the name cheddar cheese. Grade standards are USDA quality standards and are based on measurable attributes that describe the value and utility of the products. US grade standards provide a uniform language for describing the quality and condition for meat poultry, fresh fruits and vegetables, and processed fruits and vegetables. <clears throat> While safety inspections are mandatory, the federal government does not require that all food products are graded. But you do need to know your grade. Produce is graded 
based on the amount of imperfections that are allowed. It is up to you to determine what you're willing to accept. If you order bananas, for example, there are varying stages of ripeness. In stage one to three, you'll be receiving a fairly green banana. If it's in stage three to six, it will be green tipped and if seven plus will be ripe. It's important to let your vendor know how you want to receive your product. Many food processors do participate in grading voluntarily because their customers list grade requirements in their specifications. Grade standards such as USDA Prime and USDA Choice are based on the product's taste, texture, and appearance. This slide, I know it's busy, but it is a comparison of grade standards for US grade A peaches and US grade B peaches. Grade A uh, vegetables are carefully selected for color, tenderness, and freedom from blemishes. They are the most tender, succulent, and flavorful vegetables produced. Grade B vegetables are of excellent quality, but not quite so well selected for color and tenderness as grade A. They're usually slightly more mature and they have a slightly different taste than the more succulent vegetables in grade A. In preparing this webinar, I went to the Agriculture Marketing Service standards for US grade A and grade B peaches. The definition on the AMS website of grade A and grade B and that are on this slide have identical characteristics. And so as you can see, the wording is exactly the same. So that get, makes it even a little more confusing. So I went to procurement in the 21st century and it says in uh, the procurement for the 21st century that grade A fruits are carefully selected for color tenderness and freedom from blemishes. They are the most tender, succulent and flavorful. Grade B are of excellent quality, but not quite as so well selected for color and tenderness. They're usually slightly more mature and therefore have a different taste than the more succulent that are in grade A. I looked at another section of the AMS website and found that the definition of grade A peaches includes that they must be practically free from defects and reasonably good color, <clears throat> reasonably uniform in size and symmetry. And then I finally found a difference between grade A and grade B. They must score 90 points on the scoring system used by USDA. The grade B peaches must be reasonably free from defects. Grade B peaches may include mixed pieces of irregular sizes and shapes, and they must score 80 points on the scoring system. So as you can see from this slide, the wording being exactly the same makes it very confusing. So I'm based on this information, that I found between AMS and procurement in the 21st century, I'm questioning whether it's worth my while to pay the additional cost for grade A peaches versus grade B peaches. So if it were me, I think that before I make the decision on which one to use, I'm gonna to have to look at these products side by side to compare. When buying, when preparing bid solicitations for agricultural products, such as meats, grains, fruits, and vegetables, the SFA must include the Buy American provision as a requirement. This provision of course requires that a school food authority to the maximum extent possible purchase domestic commodities or products. 
The term domestic commodity or product means an agricultural commodity that is pr produced in the United States or a food product that is processed in the United States substantially using agricultural commodities that are produced in the United States. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. I need to purchase apples to be served in my classroom. I will be using red delicious apples. I have to decide what size I plan to use. I can go back to that choice plus reference guide to assist in seeing what sizes are available. I know from the food buying guide that both the 125 count and a 138 count will provide a one cup serving, which is what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna use a range and allow vendors to bid on either the 125 or the 138. However, some vendors carry both a 125 and a 138. So that is gonna dictate how vendors should quote apples. So in this case, as in the chicken nuggets we looked at before, having prospective vendors quote per case will not provide an accurate portion cost. So I may decide to have them quote the portion price. The choice plus reference guide will also tell me what size each apple should be. So if I feel like in the past, I've not gotten the correct size apple, I can look here and see that a 138 count apple should be two and three fourths inches in diameter and a 125 count apple should be two and seven eighths inches in diameter. Not a big difference, but sometimes we do see in reality, we see a big difference. I know this is a lot of words, but uh, my next step is to determine what grade of red delicious apple I plan to use. Of course, US extra fancy is the highest quality, but it's gonna be more expensive than US fa fancy. After reviewing the characteristics of both on the AMS website, I determined that US fancy is a quality product and that is the grade of product we're gonna plan to use. An easy way to determine what quantity of apples will be needed is to request a velocity report from your present vendor. A velocity report will show the quantity of apples purchased over the last year, and it's the best tool for determining your future needs. Be very careful not to over forecast. You want to make sure that you are giving prospective vendors accurate information about your usage. Over forecasting can result in increased prices if the vendor feels the information provided is not accurate. Studies have shown that SFAs get far better pricing when prospective vendors can trust that you will use the approximate amount, approximate amount that was forecast. So here is our completed RID specification. I know some of you are thinking or even saying out loud that you don't have time in your busy day to do this for each and every item that you use. Remember that you only have to do it once and it can be reused year after year if you're happy with your choices. Also, when beginning to write bid specifications, spend your time writing detailed specifications for products where you spend the most money and the items that have the most impact on the quality of the meal. Most districts will also share their bid specifications with you for you to review and change as needed. And remember, Google is your friend. I can find many of your bid specifications online in your bids. Let's look at another example. I wanna purchase two ounce whole grain bagels. I need to specify whether I want them to be bulk packed or individually wrapped. 
if I'm doing a grab and go breakfast, I may want them to be individually wrapped. I particularly like Linder's bagels because they're soft and the students really like them. <clears throat> they also have a white whole grain bagel, so the students don't realize it's whole grain. I'm going to state in my product specification that the vendor is to quote a Linder's white whole grain bagel or pre-approved equal, meaning that the vendor must submit and the SFA and or designees must approve the use of another brand of bagel other than the Linder's bagel before the stated date put forth in the bid. I know that this product is bulk and it has 72 two ounce bagels in a case. So I would state that under the case pack. Be sure to include the Buy American provision because grain is an agricultural product. The main ingredient in the product must be whole grain flour. And I'm estimating my usage to be 480 cases for the coming year. And I want each vendor to bid on the price per case. Remember that specifications do not apply only to food. You will use specifications to purchase office supplies, kitchen equipment, janitorial supplies, security systems, marketing materials, and even phone plans. If you've written your specifications correctly, it will result in fair and equitable treatment of vendors. The SFA gets what they need. Time spent doing procurement is minimized throughout the process and the SFA receives the best price or value. And all of this increases customer satisfaction, which of course is our main goal. Do make sure that you provide ample time for vendors to submit bids. While the minimum time required between the first advertisement and the bid opening is 15 days, busy vendors may just not be able to prepare bids with that short a period of time frame. And this can cause some vendors problems and then they may choose not to bid. So give them as much time as possible to ensure that you're getting their best price. Okay, that is the end. Uh, if we have any questions. Courtney? Yes, you will have access to this recording. It will be put up on the Pennington website. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay, if we don't have any other questions, we can end. Just remember that if you need assistance, we're always there to help you. So please feel free uh, to call us. Oh, question did come in. What was the name of the reference guide? And that would be the Choice Plus reference guide. It's one that I use um, frequently when writing bid specifications. <laughs> Like I said, it's old and sometimes it's hard to find on online, but if you have a hard time finding it online, then um, give me a call or shoot me an email and I'll guide you to it.
Okay. All right. Well, there seems to be no more questions. So uh, again, feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Everyone have a good day and a good rest of the week.